Hello. I thought reservations for the second Neojong had started, but they're already over. It's the Bori Man. Wow, this may have been the worst server blowout of the year. This time we will introduce one of Gunpla's most exciting volumes. I'm going to try making a second Neo Jong narrative version. This is a pre-ban limited kit. Released in 2019, price 28,600 yen including tax. The mechanical designer is Hajime Katoki. The work that appears is Mobile Suit Gundam Narrative. This is a mobile armor for base capture made using Neo Jong spare parts. When you open the cardboard box, there are two boxes inside. It was my first time seeing this kind and it didn't have an outer box like the Neo Jong. Of course, the extended effect unit Psycho Shard also arrived together. By the way, this is what it looks like compared to a regular Neo Jong box. The regular version has an illustration, which is nice. The second box is also very nice. Hmm, I think it would be better if the second also had an outer box. Although most of the kits are diverted from the HG Neo Jong, some designs are different and new parts are used such as around the chest and shoulders. Let's take a closer look as I open the box. The parts are really big, packed full. I've also opened the second box which contains large exterior parts and frame parts. There are 39 pages in the manual. There are a lot of runners included, but the parts are so huge it seems like they can be assembled quickly. The problem is finding a place to display it. I've opened it and sorted out the content. It's starting to look a bit like a garbage dump though. Approximately four to six runners are used for the second Neo Jong runner alone. The Psycho Shard and rear armor parts were not attached to the runner and were included as they were. It has beautiful molding. However, the size seems to be a little overwhelming. The exit room booster has also grown significantly. It's very thick. Some frame parts are made of ABS material. It comes with a common runner from Neo Jong made in 2014. Only five pieces had a new Neo Jong runner attached, including the generator and BMAC. The rest are the exterior parts of the chest and the parts of the frame. Also the pedestal and the acrylic rod support. Screw nuts, wheel seals and a special tank style decal that became crumpled was also included. Next up is the runner of HGUC Sinangestein, 1 to 2 total and 2 beam effects. The molding color is the same as the one sold to the general public. It looks like they are exactly the same. Two sets of bazookas were prepared so that they can be held with both hands. The manual is not a reused one, but a new one for the second Neo Jong. The backside also includes explanations of the weapons in color. This is something that makes me really happy. Next is the parts list. Approximately 21 surplus parts are generated from Neo Jong's runner. In addition, about 42 pieces are generated from the runners of Sinan Justine. We have a total of about 60 surplus parts. We will then assemble the main body. Let's see how it differs from Neo Jong by comparing them. First, I've assembled the upper half of the body. The skeleton frame is made of TG and the plastic material is ABS. The joint frame connecting the arms is also thick and has excellent holding power. The area around the shoulders is called Shoulder Weapon Bay. This is where the appearance has changed the most from Neo Jong. The distinctive red frame and lower exterior parts are newly designed. The red line on the exterior parts is not divided into parts, so white is used. The large mega particle cannon on the chest is a new part and has a slightly different shape. The inner edge is orange yellow. Apart from that, when the lower exterior parts are removed, new joint parts are added. Armed weapons such as BMAX and beam rifle can now be stored. Also, by using special joint parts, it is possible to leave the armor slightly open. This seems like it will be a plastic model original gimmick. Hattori also has a different model, and the dark glue parts are new models. It is not a part that covers the main body like Neo Jong. It changed to smaller parts. There is a 3mm shaft on the inside to which the Sinangestein can be fixed. There is space to store your feet. According to the settings, the Sinangestein is exposed due to a lack of parts. Next, we have parts for the arm unit frame. They're small so assembly can be quick. 
The frame shows straight seams, and this is how the internal structure looks. The external parts have a similar internal makeup. The frame features clean, straight seams. The internal parts are separate, eliminating visible seams. The parts are on the larger side, but they're color-coded for convenience. The arm unit is fitted with a five-piece psychocomic weapon set, usable as a priority-type large funnel bit or a five-barreled megaparticle cannon. The unit can rotate, but the gun barrel is immovable and cannot fly. Each funnel part can be individually attached or detached. Typically, the arm doesn't bend. However, by sliding the joint frame upwards, it can bend up to 90 degrees. There were also four arms to assemble for the back, totaling six arms, which was quite a task. Particularly, the large funnel bits were numerous, reminiscent of making ammunition in a factory, and it was a tedious process. The part cutting was the most time consuming. Moving on to the lower body frame, it's quite large. It's constructed from regular plastic, not ABS. The front armor consists of three parts. The color separation is surprisingly good, however, there's no lining. In the middle is a ball joint for movement. In the center front, there's a large diameter high mega particle cannon divided into parts, color coded. The rear armor is quite substantial, with numerous dowel holes and pins on the back, yet the surface is still remarkably sleek. There's a frame on the back for clean aesthetics. The verniers on both sides are reproduced in two color-coded parts. Due to the fixed back armor, there's no movement. The side armor also has an included psychological device within the shoulder, so it can't be deployed. The back doesn't have any lining and is stationary with a simple shaft. The round eye field generators on both sides of the waist are of the same design. The design of the backside of the skirt armor follows the layout of the main thruster Gyeong. The build is quite simple and the vernier is simply modeled with one part. Due to the length of the frame, a seam occurs in the center. The back of the skirt consists of two main thrusters and five large boosters. The hip joints are fixed with two shafts, hence they don't rotate or operate. The main thruster is set at a slight backwards angle, and there's also a large hole at the bottom for the acrylic rod connection. Additionally, the Citulum booster, featuring a design from Alpersal, presents a straight seam in the middle. It's pretty stiff. I believe the fit is quite impressive for a piece this large. The rear of the booster is neatly divided with excellent color coding and the absence of visible seams around the duct is also commendable. Next, let's take a look at the pedestal. If you want to use the display with the room booster connected, use a long acrylic stick. When displaying at a short height, only using the main thruster, I use a short gray ABS shim. Now let's review with the room booster connected. First, let's connect it to the main thruster. The shaft is fixed with unevenness, so it won't rotate and is firmly fixed. Attach the lower body to the acrylic support and secure it in place. Not only the pedestal, but the room booster is also firmly attached to the bottom. It has a structure that supports the main body. Attach additional side armor to both sides and connect each assembled part. Wow, it's really big. I was thinking of adding an upper body, but it sticks out of the filming space. The lower body alone is about 48 centimeters long. If you dock the upper body with a thick shaft, connect the arm units for both arms and attach the back arm, it will have a massive volume. The center of gravity may tilt back a bit, but since the shaft is flat, I don't think it will be a problem. The set of large funnel bits on the back arms could be stored in the pedestal when they were removed. By the way, the acrylic support pillars could not touch the ground when the room booster was removed, which threw off my balance and caused it to topple over. Please be cautious as the acrylic rod may break and cause injury. Continuing, let's look at Zoldan Akinen's favorite machine, Sinanja Steiner Rative version. This has been assembled quickly. Parts from HGUC Sinanju are being repurposed. Most of the parts are new, with some having a wider operating range. It is made to a very high degree of perfection. There is no difference in molding color when compared with general sales products. They had exactly the same specifications. So let's try docking it on the second Neo Jong. First, remove the lower shoulder armor and pull out the abdominal armor. 
Sinanja Stein removes the propellant tank from his backpack and bends his legs. There is a shaft that connects to the inseam so it can be firmly fixed. Reattach the armor you removed. Connect the shield to the shaft on the back and the docked state is complete. Unlike Neo Jong, there is no armor covering the body. Being able to use both arms at all times allows for a wider range of poses, which makes for an interesting design. Personally, I love the exposed red frame lines on the shoulders as an eye-catching accent. So damn cool. Next, let's try to equip Sinanja Stein with an armed back. First of all, the bazooka policy is a long version. You can also reproduce the short version by replacing it. There is no armor around the chest or shoulders, making it easier to wield weapons. My arms were heavy, and I couldn't move them. If you look at the four arms on the back held forward, the amount of material is amazing. Not at all intimidating. Also, like Sinanju, you can also wear a bazooka on your shoulder. The beam rifle's left-hand weapon handle and hand parts are also made with new modeling. Can be held in both hands. Next up is a newly designed large beam axe. Beam effects are common. By connecting them in the center, the length of the beam effect is increased and the size becomes quite impressive. The feeling of swinging it around with both hands is really cool. I think the posing can be determined by using the Sinanju Stein as a standalone display. Additionally, if you remove the sword armor, you can store a beam axe and beam rifle. This is what it looks like when I put it on. Even if the armor is attached, if you put it in the original open state of the plastic model, the weapons will intertwine a little. I'm feeling good now. Next, let's take a look at the Psycho Shard expansion gimmick. Joint parts are added with new modeling, improved to shift the position of the Psycho Shard slightly to the rear. Even with the system booster attached, you can attach the Psycho Shard without worrying about interference. It is now possible. This state of being fully equipped and alert is the most impressive. I'm sure there are many people who use this pose for their displays, but it's a little scary when you hit it and the light turns on. The super gigantic mobile armor was built using spare parts from Neo Jong's development. Although there are some differences, including coloring, it is the same Neo Jong machine. All features of the original Neo Jong have been recreated. Also, a large beam sword has been added as a new feature in the second version launch a large beam saber from the same direction as your waist. It's a huge difference, reaching several times that of the second Neo Jong itself. However, it is too short to be used in the vast battlefield of outer space. The fate of the mobile armor is that the unback is disadvantageous. This machine was mainly used in combat against mobile suits, so there were few opportunities to use it. However, the pilot equipped with narrative Gundam C is said to have broken through the psycho field barrier that he developed by putting his soul on the line. It possesses tremendous power. Yes, the HGUC second Neo Zhong has been completed. Let's take a look at the accessories. You can also assemble the white Neo Zhong by rearranging the Psycho Shard's auxiliary parts and hatch replacement parts. There are a total of 21 surplus parts. Next up, the Sinanja Steiner rated version has two beam rifles and two bazookas. A large beam axe, a beam effect, a shield, various hand parts, and a total of about 42 surplus parts will be generated. The above is a complete set of accessories. Now let's take a closer look at the main unit. First, let's try to recreate the narrative Gundam B equipment that was combined in Psycho Jack. Comparing its size with the second Neo Jong, it looks something like this. Its size is beyond that of a normal mobile suit. In the game, its total height is 116 accurately reproduced even at one fourth size. The docking points were tailored to the size of the Synergy, providing ample space to combine the narrative Gundams normally. Also, if the aircraft has a connection hole underneath, you can mount it if the size matches. You might want to try with other Gundam models as well. Next, I'll compare the official completed sample and the raw assembly. I'm missing a water train decal and a wheel sticker. The decals also include a new design for Sin and Justine, which is nice on its own. Seals are used for the red lines on the inner and exterior parts of the giant chest mega particle cannon. Given the aircraft color is light gray, the red decals stand out, it might be worth sticking them on. However, without some modification, the engraving on Sin and Justine's chest and sleeves feel a bit lacking. Next, I compared it with the HGUC Neo Zhong base model, which has a volume too large to fit in the frame. The difference is significant changes in the chest and shoulder area with new parts. The addition of Psycho Shard joint parts and the ability to adjust their position are nice touches. I doubt many homes can accommodate two machines side by side, let alone finding a glass case that can hold two machines of this size. 
Indeed, I inspected the second Neo Zhong closely. It's very heavy and movement is limited, but you can enjoy various poses by changing the arm unit's position and Sinanju Stein's armament. Being able to mount weapons on the shoulders and seeing the frame adds a lot of information. Assembly isn't too time consuming, so if you have the space, why not give it a go at the next resale? These oversized kits only go on sale once every few years, so it's probably best to buy without hesitation. If you found the above helpful, please subscribe to our highly rated channel. Thank you for watching. I hope to see an increase in views.